Keeping my distance, Mike. Keeping our distance, yeah. Standing up for the first time. This is a more sort of moving around kind of a computer file. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're on campus. We're doing some recording anyway. Let's, let's do a video. Um, I thought today we could talk about a cool cipher that sees quite a bit of use and is, I suppose, I suppose one of the only real current rivals in terms of its prevalence to AES, and that's the char char 20 cipher. Right. Uh, so it's not a dance, but it kind of mimics a dance, I guess, is the idea. So this was written in about 2008. Uh, Daniel Bernstein wrote this one. It's very cool, very, very elegant, very lightweight, right, which makes it really useful on low-powered devices. And along with AES, or the advanced encryption standard that we've covered in a previous video, Remember, this is going to be an iterative process, and what we want to do is move these things around and permute them. It's one of the only algorithms recommended for use in the modern transport layer security 1.3, right, which is the encryption that we use mostly on the web. So I guess a bit of background is that you know, almost everything uses AES, right, and that's because um, NIST ratified it as a standard and just everyone implemented it, and, and now everyone uses AES. Now, there's nothing wrong with AES, as far as I can tell. Um, the, the attacks on AES have mostly been theoretical. They can't actually be applied at the, at the scale necessary to break it. Most machines have a library that supports AES, and so browsers understand it, web servers understand it. Um, but the point is sometimes made that having just one algorithm isn't a fantastic idea, because what if someone incredibly smart like me releases a paper tomorrow um, that completely breaks AES, right? Let's put aside the ludicrousness of that. You know, theoretically it could happen, right? Not from me. But you know, someone could find a mathematical weakness or some other weakness in AES that we don't know about or some kind of attack that's very difficult to stop. And if that happens, we need a backup algorithm, right? And currently, one of the only, you know, major players in this space, I guess, is CharCha, right? There are other algorithms, of course, but this one's been a little bit tested and looks pretty good. Now, unlike AES, char char is a stream cipher. Right? Now, in practice, that doesn't make a lot of difference in terms of implementation. But basically, um, it uses what is essentially a hash function to mix up the key and your number used once and your block number, producing random key stream. And that's used with XOR to encrypt our data. So if you remember what we had in our, I'm using the board today because you know, the paper's not here. Um, we had some sort of stream cipher. So this is our key stream generator key stream generator or our pseudo random function or whatever. I don't think KSG is a real thing, I've just written that down. And then you have a key that comes in here. So this is your secret key, which in the case of AES is 256 bits. What will happen here, we also put in a nonce, right, which is a number used once. And that's used to make sure that if you don't change this key, you can generate different key streams, and that's quite important. And we also put in our block number or our counter. And that allows us to jump halfway through a file if we want to. Based on this, this iterates and produces a series of key bits, so k0, k1, k2, and we XOR that with our message, so m0, m1, m2, and out comes our ciphertext, ciphertext1, ciphertext2, <laughs> ciphertext0. So this is, in general, how a stream cipher works. These are specific, perhaps, to char char, but the idea is that the encryption and the decryption happen exactly like this. So if we want to decrypt this, we just go this way. So we just put our ciphertext in, XOR it with the same key, and out it comes. So the question then is just simply, what is it that's interesting about what CharCha -char does in here? How does it take these and turn them into key streams? This is the problem with, I can't just tear off a piece of paper, I have to... Right, so CharCha -char is a bit like a hash function in the sense that it takes a block of data and it mixes it up and it uses that for its key stream. So we have a block and we'll talk about what goes in there in a moment but it looks a little bit like the AES block, except it's bigger. So this is a four by four block, and each of these is 32 bits. Right? So in total, this is 512 bits. Right? So we're gonna fill that with some data, then we're gonna put it through a big round function. So this is our round function. And I've run out of space, because this is a, the most ludicrous aspect ratio of a, of a thing I've ever seen. So it comes out also with a four by four, also of the same size, and this is all mixed. This is our mixed block. And so this is essentially this, but completely jumbled up. And then we add these two together, right? There we go. And out comes our key stream bit, so K0, K1. And these are going to come out in 512-bit blocks. But it's not a block cipher because we just take that key stream and we XOR it with the message. And so it's a stream cipher. Right? So what happens in this round function? 
Well, the cool thing about this round function is it only uses three operations. The implementation of AES is actually quite complicated. I mean, it's not in the sense that a lot of it boils down to bit shifting and 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 all and things. But mathematically, AES is quite complicated. All the char char does is a sort of it's what we call an ARX cipher. So it's add, rotate, and XOR. Now. Add is mod 32 addition, so basically you're just adding two integers together and you don't carry any bits, right? So if it overflows, it just wraps back around. XOR is obviously XOR, we've covered this a lot before. And rotate is a bit shift and you wrap it back around. So for example, if we were wrapping around 0001 and we were doing a, a rotate one to the left, then we would, I think actually in the, in the paper uses this as a notation, then we would see something like 0011, right? Which is where this one has come over here and everything's shifted to the left. This is a bit like the color blocks in the AES video where everything kind of mixes up. Yeah, it's a bit like that, yeah. But this is happening on an integer or, you know, on, on a bit level for these bits are moving along. Um, and what that's going to do is move ones and zeros from somewhere in these values to somewhere else in these values, which over time, when you combine it with XOR and addition, it's going to start mixing up all of this a lot. Right? And that's kind of the idea. You don't want to be able to reverse any of this process, because if you can, you're going to be able to read what the key was, because right? the key goes in here. So what goes in here? Well, there's, there's, th there's four constants, because if you had zero key, that, and this was all zero, the output would be all zero. That would be a problem. So there's four constants that come in here. Then you have 256 bits worth of key. So key, here is where I write a lot of Ks. Right, these are the key bits. And then down at the bottom, we have the block number, which is sometimes 64 bits, and the nonce here, right, which is this, like this. Now, sometimes it's 64 bits. In the current standard, you tend to do something like this, where the nonce is a little bit bigger. Right? There's implementation reasons why you would change the size of these two things. So your secret key goes in here. This is the number used once to make sure that your key stream is nice and interesting. And this is where in the stream we are, in, in our 512-bit chunks. So if you're watching a streaming movie and you want to skip the boring bits and go to the good stuff, right, where you know, the terrorists have taken over Nakatomi Plaza, then you can set this block to the right place and jump straight ahead. Right? That's the idea. Okay, so what happens in here? So we have these blocks, right, which start off, obviously, with our key in and end up being totally mixed up. And what we're going to do is we're going to do 20 rounds of mixing. Some of the rounds we do in columns. So we mix A, B, C, and D. And then we mix this column, and then we mix this column, A, B, C, and D, and this column. So sometimes we mix diagonals. So it would be A, B, C, D, or A, B, C, D, and you know, down with diagonals. Right? And the reason you do this is because you want to jumble up the bits and bytes, should we say, between here in these columns, but you also want to do it in the diagonals. So that bits over here affect bits over here, affect bits over here. And so you're, this is what you have, you have good diffusion, right? which is that you, the changes in, in the here propagate to changes in everywhere, right? which makes it very hard to understand what's happened and break this cipher. So what happens? Well, each of these is a quarter round. So four of these, this one, this one, this one, and this one will be one round. Four of these would be one round. And we do, we do one of these and then one of these, one of these and then one of these, and we do about 20 times. So 10 of each. Right? Um, as far as I know, Attacks on, on char char have managed to get some information out at maybe eight rounds, right? And it's currently operating at 20 rounds. So, and I, you know, that's off the top of my head. So the security margin is pretty high. Right? So what happens in here? Well, we have these, these are our integer words. So we have A, B, C, D, right? And then you have a, quite a complicated process for each quarter round. So the first thing you do is you take B and you add it to A, right? Like this. <clears throat> then you take this from A, and you come all the way over here, and you XOR it with D. And this is just a start. Then you come in here and you, and you rotate D 16 bits to the left. And of course it wraps back round, right? Then D comes in here and is, oops, summed with C, right? And then let's just finish the whole diagram, right, rather than walk through it. So this comes down here, XOR'd with B, and then B is rotated 12. I should add, I don't know this off by heart, right? Because this is difficult to remember. All right, then B comes in. I'm going to run out of sheet and then I'm going to have to start drawing on these plugs. So A comes down here like this. Yep, and then A just comes out here like so. So A comes along here like this and is XOR back again with D. D is rotated eight to the left. Then D comes in here and is summed again with C. And C comes out here. 
B is XORed with C, and then that's rotated. Go on, draw on the plugs, go on. I don't think I can draw on that. That's a, this, just, this, looks, this looks like trouble if I draw on this, right? I, I've, I've reached the end. It's something like this. But this will look great when we do it in the video because you'll have animated all this and, and it will look fantastic, right? Even though I've totally botched up the ending. Let's just finish that off there, shall we? I know what it is. It's Instagram format, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. So that's a sum, right, without carry. That's an XOR and that's a rotation. So what's basically happening is B is coming in here and being added to A. And, and so those two are now affecting this XOR with D, which is being rotated and affecting C. And you see that this, this is going to propagate bits and bytes around very, very quickly. And we're doing this over columns and then over diagonals. And the result is a very, very good cipher. Right? The, there's a few positives to doing this over doing something like AES. Right? There are some negatives as well. But basically, the, the, the nice thing about only using add, rotate, and XOR is that it always takes exactly the same amount of time to run this. Right? There's no table lookups or clever uh, polynomial division or anything like this that you have to do. There's no conditional branching, which means that basically, no matter what your key is, if your key's all zeros or it's half zeros, it doesn't matter. This will take exactly the same amount of time. So coding this in a safe way, from a cryptography point of view, is quite straightforward, right? I'm, you know, I'm sure my code wouldn't do a great job, but you get the idea. With AES, although it's not that difficult to get an implementation of AES that technically works, it can be quite difficult to make it that's secure enough because things like the time that it takes to go into the cache and the time it takes to run up certain operations and power consumption and things, these can leak little bits of information about what's going on in the, in the inner workings, which can give the game away, right? But this isn't really an issue here. The other thing is that AES is helped somewhat by the fact that modern CPUs have Galois field arithmetic built into them as actual instructions, whereas Charter doesn't need any of that. So if you have a very low powered or old device or a smart card or something that doesn't really have clever instructions, this is going to be very, very quick, right? So it's, it's only marginally slower than AES, and that's on a system that was built to run AES as fast as possible, right? So it is pretty cool, um, and it has a cool name. When you started it, you mentioned something about putting constants in because if zeros yeah. were there, they brought, there was a problem. Totally forgot to tell you what they were. Yeah, okay. So, all right, well, let's just quickly, quickly we'll fix that, shall we? So yes, I mentioned that in the, at the beginning of the block, you have the key in here, the nonce and the ID, uh, sorry, the counter. Up here, we have constants. Now, the reason the constants are there is just basically so that zeros don't you know, completely break it. Um, they're not a secret. The constants are just a string. The string is expand 32 uh, byte k, right? So we've got four space counts. So that's four, that's four, and that's four, right? And then these get encoded as ASCII and stuck in here, right? And that's a nothing up my sleeve number. So you remember that video we did where if these were sort of weird numbers, you'd think, well, hang on a minute, where did they come from? Are they some kind of back door? Well, no, they're just a sentence, right? Exp expand the first two byte key, which is what this does, right? As long as it's something obvious, you, you know, they're just there to mix it up a bit. They're not a secret. Are you doing the char-char steps as you walk back and forwards? Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, what is a char-char anyway? I don't know, some sort of dance. Let's not have me dancing on the internet. We, people don't need to see that. This is an edited version of a cipher called Salsa, which is edited, I think, of Rumba and so on. So there's lots of different algorithms along this theme, shall we say.